Hello, my name is Mark Baldwin, and today I am going to talk about our paper, An Activity-Centered Approach to Non-Visual Computer Interaction. Accessible slides can be found at msbaldwin.com slash cscw.pdf. Tools like electronic braille displays and text-to-speech systems as pictured here mediate actions to support goals that a person might not otherwise be able to complete. Despite continued improvements to screen readers, screen magnifiers, and other assistive technologies, non-visual computing for blind users and those with limited vision continues to lag behind visual computing in usability and advanced functionality. One explanation for these challenges lies in the hierarchical, application-centric structure of graphical interfaces like the one presented here. Thus, in this work, we reconsider accessible technologies for desktop computing from the ground up as an infrastructure centered around activity. We applied an activity theory lens to analyze data collected through a series of participatory projects, working with and for blind and low vision computer users and experimental data from a previous study we conducted on a set of tangible interaction devices, which are pictured here. Our analysis focused on the mismatch between activities and the types of tasks non-visual computing users are required to perform and the potential benefits of an activity-centric approach. So next I'll share some of the results from our analysis. In a graphical environment, work is often organized into activity-like structures through arrangements of applications on the desktop. For the non-visual user, these activity-like workarounds are simply not available. Our analysis revealed that the application-oriented screen reader inserts itself aggressively into the workflow of blind and low vision users, making it difficult to reach the levels of conscious and unconscious operations that sighted users experience through graphical desktops. Traditional application document metaphor artifacts like documents and collaboration tools, as represented in the diagram here, have no knowledge knowledge of each other. A user conducts actions upon each artifact independently, and once these applications are closed, the meaningful connection between the documents is lost, requiring the user to reconstitute the activity when further actions are required. Yet, from the user's perspective, they are core parts of the same activity. Throughout our fieldwork, we observed orientation within tracking and pausing of activities as significant challenges for blind and low vision users. Finally, our fieldwork showed that the existing translation of application-centric visual information was always an obstacle that blind and low vision users had to overcome. As applications are opened, they each come with their own set of commands to operate, configure, and maintain functionality. Oftentimes, these commands are unique to the application, creating an additional burden on the user to memorize functionality at the level of application. Translation at the level of activity has the benefit of reducing many of the repetitive commands that interrupt user interaction, as these operations can occur across all applications rather than each one individually, reducing the number of objects in a computing system that the user must manage. Next, I'll briefly describe the considerations designers must engage to merge non-visual computing with the more natural orientation of human activity. First, non-visual systems should be redesigned from the ground up with a consideration for the fundamental goals of users rather than act as translators for the tasks sighted users might complete to accomplish those same goals. Second, a consideration for activity must not end with the initial goal, but must be allowed to adapt and change over time. And finally, in addition to considering that blind users might engage in different tasks than sighted users, an activity-centered approach to non-visual computing should explicitly consider the way these different tasks are carried out across applications. Activity-based systems in existing research literature rely on deep integration with the operating system or customized software to adapt the traditional application document model to activity. For non-visual users, this adaptation layer already exists in the form of tools such as screen reader or screen magnification software. Therefore, introducing activity to a non-visual system is a matter of rethinking how existing assistive tools present computational information rather than introduce additional complexity through new layers of software. 
To learn more about the application of these design considerations, please see our paper where we present a case study using an activity-oriented tangible device and software interface called KIND, pictured here. Thank you.